got some in your pocket already? Yeah, aye. Well, the <laughs> Aberdeen, they are spotted for a oh, short a while, that. not just to yeah, sing the power of the gospel to you, but to bring to you the glad tidings, the good news, Jesus Christ and Him crucified, dead and buried, raised again from the dead, in order that sinners like you and I might be reconciled to God, delivered from the power of the guilt of sin, causes the fear, causes the dread, causes the anxiety, the depression in you, release, release salvation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Saviour, all the way back to God, from the dark, dark path of sin, Jesus Christ, we commend them to you very much. We'd like to have a copy of God's Word offered to you quite freely. Word of God written, these things were written that you might believe, and believing be saved, and believing have life in his name, name, the only begotten Son of God, sent into the world, that through him, that you might be saved, delivered from the power of darkness, and delivered from your every sin and your every iniquity. Come, says the Lord Jesus Christ, come unto me, you make up the authority authority of his word come unto me he says all you that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest god sent his son into the world to bless you aberdeen but the blessing must be received the hand of faith must be reached out to receive it he came to his own but his own received them not, to as many as did receive him, to those that did believe on his name, he gave them the right, he gave them the power, the authority, to become children of God, and to come to know the blessing of God, to come to know the love of God, to come to know the forgiveness of God, to come to enter the kingdom of God. Oh, but you say, how? In the way, in the way, says the Lord Jesus Christ, of repentance and faith towards the Son of God. Repent ye and believe the gospel, he says, for the kingdom of God is at the hand. Faith towards Jesus Christ, the Son of God sent into the world to save sinners such as you are in Aberdeen today don't you know that all says God all sin come short of the glory of God not righteous says God not one not a single man woman or child born in the city of Aberdeen or elsewhere that's not a sinner does not come short of the glorious standard that God has set for mankind. Very purpose, reason for which you are made, given life and being, to glorify, fear God and glorify Him. You don't do that. You don't achieve that. God will bring you to judgment. Amen. You don't do that, my friends. You don't achieve your highest end. The highest end of man is what? To wallow in drunkenness, to wallow in drug abuse, to wallow in sexual immorality, to walk in blasphemy, to walk in, in the way of destruction. No, made, my friends, to give God glory and to fear him. Fear God, and you need fear nobody else, nobody else at all. Him that you should fear, the one who has the power not only to kill your body, 
but kill your body and cast your soul into eternal flames. So I bid you escape the present wrath of God. The Bible tells me that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven now against all the ungodliness, the wickedness of men who hold down the truth of the knowledge of God in wickedness. Wrath of God is upon you, upon your nation, upon your city, upon you yourself. Wrath of God. One thing to say again, if it's a fucking God, what the hell is he? Away you and wash your filthy mouth out. Get on your knees, wife. Get on your knees, wife. Ah, huh? you blasphemous creature. God will bring you to judgment for that, young lady. I tell you, there's a God, and you must obey him. And if you do not, he will bring you to judgment. Escape the wrath to come. Wrath of God presently upon you. You just heard an expression of it. That's the wrath of God revealed from heaven. Listen to what comes out of their mouth. Watch their behavior, their conduct. Listen to the insanity of your day and generation. A generation that can't define what a woman is. A generation that thinks marriage is between two men and two women. A generation, insanity, I tell you. That's the wrath of God. That's what he's given you over to, to reprobate minds, to do those things that are not seemly, not fitting, I tell you, for animals to do, never mind human beings. God is judging you now. His wrath is upon you. He's angry with the wicked every day. But I tell you, there's a way of escape for whoever believes in Jesus, in the Son of God, is not condemned. There's a way of escape. There's a way out. And that way out, one way only. I am the way, says the Lord Jesus Christ. No man cometh unto the Father. No one gets right with God but by me. None other name under heaven, the whole canopy of heaven, whereby you must be saved. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You come to him, and to him coming, you get life from the dead. You come to him, and you get deliverance from the guilt and the fear, the condemnation. You come to him, and you get deliverance from your sin, from your sinful addictions. He has power, don't you know? Power over the drugs, power over the alcohol, power over the uncleanness. He has power, wonder-working power, I tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Power over the grave, power over death, the power to give life to all who come in faith to the Son of God. I am the resurrection and the life, he says. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live life in the gospel. Not religion, my friend. Not dead works. Not dead religion. Not the Church of Rome. Not the Church of Scotland. Not the philosophies of men. But in the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings, today, as ours declared in Aberdeen, hush yourself, hush yourself, be quiet, and get on your knees, get on your knees, cry out to God that he have mercy on your soul, sin, sick soul, Aberdeen, come to Jesus, he bids you to it. He commands you. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Rest, peace with God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding. All to be found in Jesus, 
And then Jesus alone, him you must come to, him you must trust in. Turn, 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 says the Lord. Why will you die when there's life, when there's eternal life, life and immortality? When, my friends, there is eternal life to be found, to be had in the Savior for the want of coming to Him and trusting in Him, putting your confidence in Him. Son of God, who loved sinners and gave Himself for them, that you might come to know that love, experience that love, taste the goodness of the Lord, the kindness, the merciful kindness of the Lord. Oh, come to him, Aberdeen. Come to him today. Now's the time, says God. Now's the only time given to you. Having got tonight, having got tomorrow, having got next week, having got your old age, now is the only time you have. Now, says God, is the day of salvation. Come to Jesus, trust in him, come in the way of repentance, turning from your sin, turning from the pathway of destruction, turning into the pathway of life, found in Jesus and in Jesus Christ the Lord. Word of God for you today, here in Aberdeen City, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God for I my being. That, my friends, the worship of God, that's the very reason for which you are made, that God gave you life and being. That's what you should be doing every single day of your earthly existence, worshiping God. Who do I mean when I say God? I'm not talking about Allah, Muhammad, false God, an idol, the uh, product of a, an imposter's imagination. When I say God, do I mean the God of the false religions of the world? No. Do I mean the Pope of Rome, his God? No. Who do I mean? The triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the God who made heaven and earth, who formed the earth and stretched out the heavens, the almighty, everlasting, eternal God, from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. Before the mountains were formed, he was, is, and always shall be God. He's your maker. Worship him, that's what you are made for. That's your primary business in Aberdeen today, to fall down before him and worship and adore him. The one who made you and made everything else. The one who is all powerful, almighty. And the one, my friend, who one day, one day if you do not worship him truly, if you do not make obedience to him, the living God, the life-giving God, he's the one who gives life and breath to every creature. You can't breathe without him. You can't think without him. You can't walk without him. You can't do anything without him. So away with your nonsense that there is no such thing as a God. You know differently, God says, Every man, woman, and child born into this world has the knowledge of God. You are without excuse because of all the things that God has made. Even that tells you. You look in the mirror in the, in the morning and the face that you see, that human being you see, a man, a woman, made the image of God, tells you, testifies, to the reality of the life-giving God, the God who made heaven and earth, and the God who made you, and the God who one day, if you do not worship him, obey him, he will bring you to judgment. 
He, my friends, tells us in his word, whoever you are, O oh man, you are without excuse for not knowing him and not obeying him. That's what he made you for. That's what he calls you to. And that, my friends, is what he requires of you. And if you've not done that, what's the first line of obedience that he requires of you? That is that you should believe on his son, Jesus Christ. Obey the call of the gospel, the command of the gospel even. Repent ye and believe the gospel. He's coming again, the Bible says, with his holy angels in flaming fire to take vengeance upon all that know not God and who obey not the gospel. Those who do not obey the call, better you never heard the gospel, better you never sat here and listened, makes you more culpable if you do not obey the call coming to take vengeance upon all who do not obey, who do not take heed to the call. What is the call, you say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Repent ye and believe the gospel, except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish in your sin. Many of you perishing today in your life, perishing in your mind, broken minds because of the way that you live, because of the disobedience, because of the sinfulness and the wickedness of your lives, perishing now in your minds, broken minds, broken bodies, many of you, I, because you've lived in drug abuse, alcohol abuse, filthy immorality, because of your lifestyle, because of the way that you live, and disobedient to God's commandment. Perishing now in your minds and in your body. Perishing in your soul. And one day, one day I tell you to perish for all eternity in the damnation of hell. Unless that is you repent and believe the gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, not perish, not perish other day, but have everlasting life. No, you do that, mister. Shut up. Shut up. Get on your knees in repentance. Huh? What? God, the Son Jesus Christ. That's your brain you're talking about, sir. Put it in gear. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Put Aberdeen, if you've got one left, put your brains in gear. Yeah. Jesus came to save. Save you from a bad head, a bad heart, and a bad record. Bad heads, you don't use your reason. Insanity, insanity rules in your modern day culture. Utter insanity, I tell you. When you tell one another that a female can become a male and vice versa. Insanity rules in your mind, Aberdeen. Jesus came that you might be found sitting at his right, sitting at his feet and clothed in your right mind. Only, only Jesus can fix your wrong-headedness. Only Jesus can fix your bad head. You get to grips with his word, and in your mind, yeah, you begin to think God's thoughts after him. And your mind begins to function properly again for the first time in your existence. Bad heads, bad hearts. Jesus must come and open them up and let out the poison of sin and fill your heart with the love of God, the life of God, the grace, the forgiveness, the kindness of God. And then Jesus, Jesus 
with his blood that he shed on that cross, so loved the world. God's Son so loved the world that he came and lived and died on that cross to shed his blood so that that bad record of yours might be cleansed, washed away, forgiven. A new heart, a new start, the record clear, wrath of God taken from off of you, all free by the love of God in Jesus Christ, who sent his Son into the world to save, to save sinners. That's you all. That's all of us, yourself and myself included. Sent his Son into the world not to make you healthy, wealthy, and prosperous. Sent his Son into the world to save you from that which endangers you. Sin and death and hell. Sin leads to death and death leads to hell. Eternal damnation awaits you. Something to be feared of. Something, my friends, that ought to make you the very thought of you. Eternal torments. Smoke of their torment rises up, ascends up forever and ever. Escape the wrath of God. Escape the anger of God. Angry with the wicked every day. But in his merciful kindness, in the vastness and immensity of his love, sending his son into the world, that through him that you might be saved, and come to know and experience the love of God, the grace, the mercy, the kindness of God, your sins forgiven, and the assurance one day of a hope in heaven come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. And know the joy of the Lord. My meditation of him, says David, shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Happiness in Jesus. Happiness, that thing that's one step ahead of you in life all the time. Never happy for long. Happy, maybe when you've got alcohol in you. Happy when you've got a drug fix. Happy when you're doing the materialism. Happy when you're doing the immorality. Happiness, yeah. Pleasure and sin, says God. But only for a season. Only for a moment. And then afterwards. Then afterwards, nothing but the misery again and again and again. Because that's the cause of your misery. The sin. She's as miserable as sin, you say. He's as miserable as sin, you say. That's what makes people miserable. Jesus gave you a joy, he says. A joy that no man can take away from you. Love and life and lasting joy. Lord Jesus found in thee no other day in which you can find satisfaction, in which you can find gladness, in which you can find joy, happiness, eternal happiness. Why? Because your sins would be forgiven. Because, my friend, your name would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's something to joy in, knowing that your sins are forgiven, not presuming. But knowing that they're forgiven, knowing that Jesus has saved the price and paid it in full, written across over his cross now are the words paid in full. The debt has been paid, he died for the sins of the world. And coming to him, coming to his cross, coming to Calvary, Coming to that place where the Son of God bled and died for sinners, took the curse and took the wrath of God upon himself so that the believer, the one who truly believes in the Son of God, gets a free path, gets forgiveness, 
gets cleansing, I ask you. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You must be. You must be. Oh, there's no way back to God. No reconciliation to God. No way to heaven. The door is closed against you. The blood of God's Son shed for sinners must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God has taken away the sin of the world. Jesus shed his blood that you, you personally, might be forgiven, the guilt removed, the fear taken away, the judgment, the wrath disappears because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son shed for sinners, declared amongst you here today, forgiving the sweetness of God's forgiveness, I tell you, nothing like it. Peace of our peace with God, an end of the warfare, an end of the hostility, the anger, the rage in your heart and mind, and you don't even know why it's there. Because you're at enmity with God, hostile in your sinful mind against God, that's why. But when the peace of God, when there's peace with God, and the peace of God fills your heart and mind because you've been forgiven, because the slate has been wiped clean. You've been given a new start. You've been given a new life. Joy, gladness, I tell you such as you never ever knew possible. A joy that no one can take away from you. A joy that nothing in this world can take away from you. Everlasting love. Oh, maybe you've been to the broken systems of this world and you've drank, you've drank deeply, looking for love, looking for life, looking for happiness. And what did you get? You went to the alcohol, you went to the drugs, you went to human relationships, materialism, you went to the all kinds of things in this world. And what did you find? Did you find love? Did you find light? Did you find happiness? No, you did not. The broken systems of this world, they leave you more miserable and they just mock and scorn you and laugh in your face. No, these are commodities only Jesus can give you. Love, everlasting love in Jesus. Life eternal in Jesus. Lasting joy. Now none but Christ can satisfy. No other name for me. There's love and life and lasting joy. Lord Jesus, found in thee. Worshiping God, that's what you are made for. To obey him, to bow the knee to him. The idols go, you repent of them, even the idol of self, and you prostrate yourself before Almighty God, who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to die on a cross, to take that curse and that wrath upon himself so that that forgiveness could be yours, so that that love, that life, and that lasting joy could be yours. But you've got to come to him. You've got to come to Jesus. You've got to come to him to get it. You've got to stretch out the hand of faith. By faith, you've got to make Jesus your own. He's the gift of God to you. God so loved the world that he gave. Gave his son. Take him. Take the gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Will you take him? Will you make him your own by faith? Will you believe? All things.
things are possible, says Jesus, to the one who believes. Only believe, he says. Faith, taking Jesus at his word. Come to me. He'll make your head right, sir. He'll make your stupid head right. Yeah, that empty head, he'll fill it with some sense. Come to me, says Jesus, on the authority of his word. Come unto me, he says, and I will give you rest. Rest with God, peace with God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding. Oh, gladness. But I have to tell you, my friend, the day of judgment is coming. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. Let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. That day has been appointed in which God will judge the world in righteousness, perfect righteousness. The day has been appointed the judge has been appointed, Judge Jesus. Madam, Madam, would you like a copy of God's Word? Have a good day. I have to tell you solemnly, seriously, God has appointed the day. We don't know what day that is. But the day has been appointed. The judge has been appointed. Jesus, by dint of his resurrection from the dead, he's the appointed judge. And he will either be your judge or your advocate, one of the two. But that day is coming and coming soon. It is appointed unto man once to die. Inevitable, inescapable. You're going to breathe your last. You're going to go out of this world, and the very next thing that you will see will be God Almighty, Jesus Christ, to judge you, to judge you. Today he's the Lamb of God who would take your sins away. Then he will be your dreadful judge who will condemn you into all eternity, who will banish you into the damnation of hell forever. And ever, unless, unless that is, unless that is the day, unless now you repent, unless now, unless at some point in your history you're reborn, you must be born again, Jesus says. Except the man be born again, except God by the gospel I'm preaching to you comes to you and then light you illumines your mind, your heart, puts his life into your soul and his love into your heart. Unless you're born again, the day will come when you wish you had never been born at all. So before that day comes, and coming soon, very soon I tell you, I hear, I hear his footsteps. The judge is before the door even now and soon that door will be open and you'll be stood before the judge of all the earth and he will judge you perfectly every emotion every inclination to sin every simple thought word or deed i tell you or rather jesus does every idle word that you ever spoke Jesus Christ will judge you for in that day, condemn you to all eternity, forfeiting any comfort, any goodness, any love at all. Burn it to the fires and flames of hell forever. Except that is, unless that is, you repent and believe the gospel. Unless that is God in his grace and kindness through the preaching of the gospel here today calls you, summons us here, calls you apart from your sin, calls you apart from your unbelief, 
calls you apart from your foolish atheism, calls you apart from your darkness, calls you apart from your misery, calls you apart to himself, lest you hear his voice. Not mine, not mine. You can hear my voice, but you must hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never, never perish, he says. Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Never turn you away. Come to Jesus. Come to him today. Come you may. He bids you to. Come unto me. And I will give you rest. What hinders you, Aberdeen? What keeps you from the Savior? What keeps you from forgiveness? What keeps you from eternal life? What keeps you from perishing ever? Nothing but your unbelief. Nothing but your evil heart of unbelief. Yes, sir. You're wrong, sir. You're dead wrong, sir. Dead, dead wrong. Except you repent, Aberdeen. Except you repent and receive the blessing and receive the love of God in Jesus Christ. God is angry, angry with the wicked every day. Why? Because he's a God of love. And a God who is a God of love is angry with wickedness. You're a parent, a grandparent. You've never been angry with your children involved in wickedness. Of course you have. Why? Because you hate them? No, because you love them. God is a God of love. And he hates wickedness and people involved in wickedness. So in order, in order for his anger to be turned from you, in order for you to receive the love of God, the mercy of God, the kindness of God, eternal life, you must turn from that wickedness. Jesus was given that name. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins, not in them. So today you must turn from your sins, turn from all wickedness, and turn to Jesus Christ. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. He will show mercy abundantly, pardon, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Aberdeen, and his righteousness and all the rest shall be added unto you. Righteousness is required of you. In that day when you stand before God, I tell you, you stand in your own righteousness. Filthy rags, says God. Filthy rags, that's the best of your efforts. Filthy rags. I tell you, you stand before God in that day. In the filthy rags of your own righteousness, you'll be turned away and you'll be turned into hell forever and ever. Don't let that be your end, Aberdeen. Don't let that be your finish. Don't let that be the end of your earthly, miserable, sinful existence. But while you may, while the gospel is declared amongst you, even this day, I call you seriously, Sincerely, in love, I call upon you to come.
call upon the name of the Savior. Call upon you. Obey the call of the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the only way you can enter God's kingdom. Jesus says so. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, Aberdeen. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. If you'd like to have a copy of God's work freely offered to you, no cost, no obligation to you, you're simply for the taking the written word of God. Read, use, meditate upon the lovely person of Jesus who so loved sinners that he came into the sin-cursed world to die for them and rise again from the dead in order that they might know God's salvation. Living, he loved me. Dying he saved me, then he decamped my sins far away. Rising he justified me freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Coming soon, coming to judge the world. Coming to judge you, or coming to save you. Which will it be, Aberdeen? Repent. Ye and believe the gospel, yeah. salvation, yeah. Yeah. no condemnation for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Aberdeen. Like to have a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you, bless you, Aberdeen, and have mercy, mercy upon your precious. Flesh, never die in soul.